Yashar Jasher 56. And Yaakov lived in the land of Mitzrayim 17 years. And the days of Yaakov and the years of his life were 147 years. At that time, Yaakov was attacked with that illness of which he died. And he sent and called for his son Yosef from Mitzrayim. And Yosef, his son, came from, from Mitzrayim. And Yosef came unto his father. And Yaakov said unto Yosef and unto his sons, Behold, I die, and the Elohim of your ancestors will visit you and bring you back to the land which Yahuwah swore to give unto you and unto your children after you. Now, therefore, when I am dead, bury me in the cave which is in Machpelah, in Hebron, in the land of Canaan, near my ancestors. And Yaakov made his sons swear to bury him in Machpelah, in Hebron. And his sons swore unto him concerning this thing. And he commanded them, saying, Serve Yahuwah Elohechem, for he who delivered your fathers will also deliver you from all trouble. And Yaakov said, Call all your children unto me. And all the children of Yaakov's sons came and sat before him. And Yaakov blessed them, and he said unto them, Yahuwah Elohim of your fathers shall grant you a thousand times as much, and bless you. And may he give you the blessing of your father, Avraham. And all the children of Yaakov's sons went forth on that day, after he had blessed them. And on the next day, Yaakov again called for his sons, and they all assembled and came to him and sat before him. And Yaakov on that day blessed his sons before his death. Each man did he bless according to his blessing. Behold, it is written in the Sefer of the Torah of Yahuwah appertaining to Yashara'el. And Yaakov said unto Yahudah, I know, my son, that you are a mighty man for your brethren. Reign over them, and your sons shall reign over their sons forever. Only teach your sons the bow and all the weapons of war, in order that they may fight the battles of their brother, who will rule over his enemies. And Yaakov again commanded his sons on that day, saying, Behold, I shall be this day gathered unto my people. Carry me up from Mitzrayim and bury me in the cave of Machpelah, as I have commanded you. Howbeit, take heed, I pray you, that none of your sons carry me, only yourselves, and this is the manner you shall do unto me. When you carry my body to go with it to the land of Canaan to bury me. Yahuda, Yishakar, and Zevelin shall carry my coffin at the eastern side. Reuven, Shimon, and Gad at the south. Ephraim, Menasheh, and Binyamin at the west. Dan, Ashur, and Naphtali at the north. Let not Levi carry with you, for he and his sons will carry the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah with Yashara'el in the camp. Neither let Yosef my son carry, for as a king, so let his glory be. How be it? Ephraim and Manasseh shall be in their stead. 
Thus shall you do unto me when you carry me away. Do not neglect anything of all that I command you. And it shall come to pass when you do this unto me, that Yahuwah will remember you favorably and your children after you forever. And you, my sons, honor each his brother and his relative and command your children and your children's children after you to serve Yahuwah Elohim of your ancestors all the days in order that you may prolong your days in the land, you and your children and your children's children forever, when you do what is good and upright in the sight of Yahuwah Elohechem to go in all his ways. And you, Yosef, my son, Forgive, I pray you, the wrongs of your brethren and all their misdeeds in the injury that they heaped upon you. For Elohim intended it for you and your children's benefit. And, O oh, my son, leave not your brethren to the inhabitants of Mitzrayim. Neither hurt their feelings, for behold, I consign them to the land of Elohim and in your hand to guard them from the Mitzrim. And the sons of Yaakov answered their father, saying, O oh, our father, all that you have commanded us, so will we do. May Elohim only be with us. And Yaakov said unto his sons, So may Elohim be with you when you guard all his ways. Turn not from his ways either to the right or the left, in performing what is good and upright in his sight. For I know that many and grievous troubles will befall you in the latter days in the land. Yea, your children and children's children only serve Yahuwah, and he will save you from all trouble. And it shall come to pass when you shall go after Elohim to serve him and will teach your children after you and your children's children to know Yahuwah. Then will Yahuwah raise up unto you and your children a servant from amongst your children. And Yahuwah will deliver you through his hand from all affliction and bring you out of Mitzrayim and bring you back to the land of your fathers to inherit it securely. And Yaakov ceased commanding his sons, and he drew his feet into the bed. He died and was gathered to his people. And Yosef fell upon his father, and he cried out and wept over him, and he kissed him. And he called out in a bitter voice, and he said, O oh, my father, my father. And his son's women and all his household came and fell upon Yaakov, and they wept over him and cried in a very loud voice concerning Yaakov. And all the sons of Yaakov rose up together, and they tore their garments, and they all put sackcloth upon their loins, and they fell upon their faces and they cast dust upon their heads toward the heavens. And the thing was told unto Achenat, Yosef's woman. And she rose up and put on a sack. And she, with all the Mitzrit women with her, came and mourned and wept for Yaakov. And also all the people of Mitzrayim who knew Yaakov came all on that day when they heard this thing, and all Mitzrayim wept for many days. And also from the land of Canaan did the women come unto Mitzrayim when they heard that Yaakov was dead, and they wept for him in Mitzrayim for seventy days. And it came to pass after this, that Yosef commanded his servants, the doctors, 
to embalm his father with myrrh and frankincense and all manner of incense and perfume. And the doctors embalmed Yaakov as Yosef had commanded them. And all the people of Mitzrayim and the elders and all the inhabitants of the land of Goshen wept and mourned over Yaakov and all his sons and the children of his household lamented and mourned over their father Yaakov many days. And after the days of his weeping had passed away, at the end of seventy days, Yosef said unto Pharaoh, I will go up and burn my father in the land of Canaan, as he made me swear, rather bury my father in the land of Canaan, as he made me swear, and then I will return. And Pharaoh sent Yosef, saying, Go up and bury your father, as he said, and as he made you swear. And Yosef rose up with all his brethren to go to the land of Canaan, to bury their father, Yaakov, as he had commanded them. And Pharaoh commanded that it should be proclaimed throughout Mitzrayim, saying, Whosoever goes not up with Yosef and his brethren to the land of Canaan to bury Yaakov shall die. And all Mitzrayim heard of Pharaoh's proclamation, and they all rose up together. And all the servants of Pharaoh, and the elders of his house, and all the elders of the land of Mitzrayim went up with Yosef. And all the officers and nobles of Pharaoh went up as the servants of Yosef. And they went to bury Yaakov in the land of Canaan. And the sons of Yaakov carried the coffin upon which he lay. According to all that their father commanded them, so did his sons unto him. And the coffin was of pure gold, and it was inlaid round about with onyx stones and bedlium. And the covering of the coffin was gold woven work, joined with threads, and over them were hooks of onyx stones and bedlium. And Yosef placed upon the head of his father, Yaakov, a large golden crown, and he put a golden scepter in his hand, and they surrounded the coffin, as was the custom of kings during their lives. And all the troops of Mitzrayim went before him in this array. At first, all the mighty men of Pharaoh, and the mighty men of Yosef, and after them, the rest of the inhabitants of Mitzrayim. And they were all girded with swords and equipped with coats of mail. And the trappings of war were upon them. And all the weepers and mourners went at a distance opposite to the coffin, going and weeping and lamenting. And the rest of the people went after the coffin. And Yosef and his household went together near the coffin, barefooted and weeping. And the rest of Yosef's servants went around him. Each man had his ornaments upon him, and they were all armed with their weapons of war. And fifty of Yaakov's servants went in front of the coffin, and they strewed along the road myrrh and aloes, and all manner of perfume, and all the sons of Yaakov that carried the coffin walked upon the perfumery, and the servants of Yaakov went before them, strewing the perfume along the road. And Yosef went up with a heavy camp, and they did after this manner every day until they reached the land of Canaan. And they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which was on the other side of the Yardan. And they mourned an exceeding great and heavy mourning in that place. 
And all the kings of Canaan heard of this thing, and they all went forth, each man from his house, thirty-one kings of Canaan. And they all came with their men to mourn and weep over Yaakov. And all these kings beheld Yaakov's coffin, and behold, Yosef's crown was upon it, and they also put their crowns upon the coffin, and encircled it with crowns. And all these kings made it, rather, made in that place a great and heavy mourning with the sons of Yaakov and Mitzrayim over Yaakov. For all the kings of Canaan knew the valor of Yaakov and his sons. And the report reached Esau, saying, Yaakov died in Mitzrayim, and his sons and all Mitzrayim are covering him to the land, rather conveying him to the land of Canaan to bury him. And Esau heard this thing, and he was dwelling in Mount Seir, and he rose up with his sons and all his people and all his household, a people exceedingly great. And they came to mourn and weep over Yaakov. And it came to pass, when Esau came, he mourned for his brother Yaakov, and all Mitzrayim and all Canaan again rose up and mourned a great mourning with Esau over Yaakov in that place. And Yosef and his brethren brought their father, Yaakov, from that place. And they went to Hebron to bury Yaakov in the cave by his fathers. And they came unto Kiryat Arba, to the cave. And as they came, Esau stood with his sons against Yosef and his brethren as a hindrance in the cave, saying, Yaakov shall not be buried therein, for it belongs to us and to our father. And Yosef and his brethren heard the words of Esau's sons, and they were exceedingly wroth. And Yosef approached unto Esau, saying, What is this thing which they have spoken? Surely my father, Yaakov, bought it from you for great riches after the death of Yitzchak, now five and twenty years ago. And also all the land of Canaan he bought from you and from your sons and your seed after you. And Yaakov bought it for his sons and his seed after him for an inheritance forever. And why speak you these things this day? And Esau answered, saying, You speak falsely and utter lies, for I sold not anything belonging to me in all this land. As you say, neither did my brother Yaakov buy anything belonging to me in this land. And Esau spoke these things in order to deceive Yosef with his words, for Esau knew that Yosef was not present in those days when Esau sold all belonging to him in the land of Canaan to Yaakov. And Yosef said unto Esau, Surely my father inserted these things with you in the record of purchase and testified the record with witnesses. And behold, it is with us in Mitzrayim, and Esau answered, saying unto him, Bring the record, all that you will find in the record, so will we do. And Yosef called unto Naphtali, his brother, and he said, Hasten quickly, stay not, and run, I pray you, to Mitzrayim, and bring all the records. The record of the purchase, the sealed record, and the open record. 
and also all the first records in which all the transactions of the birthright are written. Fetch you, and you shall bring them unto us hither, that we may know from them all the words of Esau and his sons which they spoke this day. And Naphtali hearkened to the voice of Yosef, and he hastened and ran to go down to Mitzrayim, and Naphtali was lighter on foot than any of the stags that were upon the wilderness, for he would go upon ears of grain without crushing them. And when Esau saw that Naphtali had gone to fetch the records, he and his sons increased their resistance against the cave, and Esau and all his people rose up against Joseph and his brethren to battle. And all the sons of Yaakov and the people of Mitzrayim fought with Esau and his men. And the sons of Esau and his people were smitten before the sons of Yaakov. And all the sons of Yaakov slew of Esau's people forty men. And Chushim the son of Dan, the son of Yaakov, was at that time with Yaakov's sons, but he was about a hundred cubits distance from the place of battle, for he remained with the children of Yaakov's sons by Yaakov's coffin to guard it. And Chushim was dumb and deaf. Still, he understood the voice of consternation amongst men. And he asked, saying, Why do you not bury the dead, and what is this great consternation? And they answered him the words of Esau and his sons. And he ran to Esau in the midst of the battle, and he slew Esau with a sword, and he cut off his head. And it sprang to a distance, and Esau fell amongst the people of the battle. And when Chushim did this thing, the sons of Yachakov prevailed over the sons of Esau. And the sons of Yachakov buried their father Yachakov by force in the cave. And the sons of Esau beheld it. And Yaakov was buried in Hebron, in the cave of Machpelah, which Avraham had bought from the sons of Chet for the possession of a burial place. And he was buried in very costly garments. And no king had such honor paid him as Yosef paid unto his father at his death. For he buried him with great honor, like unto the burial of kings. And Yosef and his brethren made a mourning of seven days for their father.